Good morning from St. Stephen's United Methodist Church. This is Pastor Roland, and we're so grateful that you're joining us via live stream this morning. Uh, we're grateful for each person that's participating in worship, and we just thank you for your continued attendance and, uh, and uh, are just so grateful for all that you do, and we thank you for your prayers, and we thank you for all that you're doing to support the life of the church. Uh, let's begin our time of worship with a word of prayer this morning. Oh, loving Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We're so grateful for all that you do for us and how you're working and moving in our lives. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We thank you for being present with us to reveal the full nature of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us and will do for us in our lives together. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Spirit and help us to live life flowing in that and moving with and in the power of your Spirit this day. We pray that you would bless this service, that you would guide us and direct us in all that we're about, that you might glorify Jesus in all that we do, and that we might glorify him in all of our lives together. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to join us in our opening praise. Live in God's love. Let, Let that love be poured out for, for all God's, God's people. people. Bring hope and peace to all whom you meet. We, we are, are called, called to, to be God's, God's witnesses. witnesses. Celebrate and rejoice. Praise, praise be to God who has called, healed, and given us a ministry of peace. Amen. Amen. I sing the almighty power of oh God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. Full at God's command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord who filled the earth with food, who formed the creatures through the word and then proclaimed them good. Lord, how I'm 
survey the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant or flower below but makes thy glories known, and clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows life from thee is ever in thy care, and everywhere that we can be, God, God, Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our children's time this morning at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're with us today, and today I've got a little friend. He's not live like Seamus, but he's equally adorable, I think. Uh, this is called Courage Lion. Uh, Courage Lion's not mine, it's my daughter Carly's, and uh, Carly's had Courage Lion since she was a little girl. I'm going to show you a picture of Carly with Courage Lion. Can you see that? Courage Lion was really important uh, for Carly uh, when she was little because Courage Lion gave her comfort when she had to do things that stretched her. Sometimes when she was dancing and did other things that uh, made her a little bit nervous or anxious, she loved to have Courage Lion with her. And you know what? In today's scripture, uh, in big church, when you listen to the sermon, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit who is our comforter. So it's good to be comforted and to know that uh, God is with us always, and it's God who brings us comfort. Just like Courage Line brought comfort to Carly when she was a little girl, uh, she still loves Cur Courage Lion, and I do too, because it reminds us that the Holy Spirit comforts us, and he helps us to not be afraid and to live life confidently. So a lot of things are happening in the world around us that might make us a little bit fearful, but the thing that we need to remember is that the Holy Spirit is still present with us. That's the one thing that the Bible promises us in the Scripture today is that the Holy Spirit will always be with us and that he'll never leave us or forsake us and that he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's an amazing thing to think about. So just like a Courage Lion helped Carly have courage, I'm praying and believing that for you the Holy Spirit will be felt in your life so that you can have courage and be encouraged today. We thank you for being with us again today, and I hope that you have an amazingly blessed day and that you would not fear because God is always with you. Good morning. We have several joys and concerns to share today. Uh, for the joys listed, Harold White celebrated a happy but stay-at-home uh, birthday last week. He was 90 years young, so Harold, uh, we hope that you had an enjoyable birthday, and um, we wish you the best. Uh, Julie Bailey also celebrated her birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday, Julie. Linda McFadden will celebrate her birthday this coming week, and Linda, we wish you a happy birthday as well. Congratulations to our college graduates, and we have four. Uh, Winchell Gallardo graduated from the University of Tulsa. Matthew Moling graduated from Oklahoma City University. Alyssa Stevens from Oklahoma State University. And Carla Youngberg from Oklahoma City University. So congratulations to all of our uh, graduates this year. A different time of graduation. Uh, but we wish you all the best in the future. Cindy Slavin has three joys to share. Uh, number one, her family was finally able to lay her mother's ashes to rest uh, along with Pastor Roland's help. And her daughter, Kayla Owens, has graduated with her PhD in pharmacy from the University of Tennessee. And her third joy is that her grandchildren have finished the school year with good grades 
Amy has been promoted to second grade, and Duncan has been promoted to fourth grade. Now, Cindy, we're very happy for you with all the joys that you shared with us today. And we have a new baby in the congregation. Uh, Amit, Venetia, and Krupa, Christian, welcomed a new baby boy to their family on March 18th. His name is Arav Christian. He weighed eight pounds and six ounces, and we're happy to have our newest member of the church here. I'm sure Krupa is happy to have a new baby brother. Veronica Lawwill has a new grandson, Gabriel Joseph Ash was born Wednesday, May 13th, to her son and daughter-in-law, Glenn and Sabrina Ash. Congratulations, Veronica, to you and your family. The concerns that are listed for today, Raven, who is uh, the daughter of a friend of Linda Dyer, <clears throat> has been admitted to the hospital, and they are trying to determine what is wrong. So let's keep Raven in our prayers that, and the doctors too, that they will find answers for her. Karen Bissell's grandson, Connor, had allergy testing this week. They found 17 things that he is allergic to. So the doctor has recommended allergy shots. Um, prayers that all goes well for Connor. And um, we're going through that with Noah. I know that can be a long process with allergy shots. Barb Malone would like prayers for two of her friends who are dealing with cancer. Marlene, who is 82 and has stage four colon cancer, and her friend Elise, who is 64 and is in the midst of her third round of breast cancer. So let's keep these two ladies, who are friends of Barb's, in our prayers for their healing and recovery. These are the joys and the concerns that are listed for today. Let's quieten our spirit as we go to the Lord in prayer today. Oh, gracious and loving Lord, we thank you so much for all the gifts that you give us. We thank you for the gift of life and the gift of new life through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit who enlivens and empowers us and strengthens us to be encouraged even in the midst of difficult times and also helps us to celebrate the joyful times as well. Lord, we're so grateful for all that you're doing and we're so grateful for new life that we celebrate on this day, and we're so grateful for new births. That's an amazing gift, and we're so overwhelmingly thankful for that reality in the life of the church and in the life of families. Lord, we thank you and praise you also today that you are indeed the great physician, the one who heals us. We pray that you would be with those that we have named. We realize there's no distance in prayer, and that as we join together virtually, that uh, our hearts are in one agreement that you would be releasing your power in all of those that need your healing touch in the life of this day. We gratefully acknowledge that you are the great physician, the one who brings healing and wholeness to us all, and we just pray that you would release that power uh, in the lives of those that need that touch in this day uh, in their place. And Lord, we're just so grateful for all that you do for us every day. We thank you for all the gifts that you give us. We are so blessed as a people. We thank you for the gift of your Son and for the gift of the Holy Spirit who reveals the Son to each one of us who makes Jesus real in our lives and helps us to remember and be reminded of uh, your ministry and your mission it's to bring salvation to the world. Help us to be able to live life fully for Jesus through the grace and power of your Spirit this day. We thank you for so many things, but above all and in all things, we thank you for Jesus and his willingness to come into the world to teach us the way to you, to teach us even how we could pray to you as he taught us to pray these words with meaning from our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Call me. 
me out upon the water the great unknown the feet may fail there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you never failed and you won't start above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine oh. you are mine
Amen. We've come to the place in our worship service where we worship God through our giving, and I think that's been and continues to be one of the greatest blessings in my life, is to be able to give into the kingdom of God because we know that that has eternal value and meaning. I just want to say once again, we appreciate so much your willingness to send your tithes and offerings to St. Stephen's United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that uh, we can move forward in the power of the Spirit uh, as we are about the work of ministry in this community and around the world as well. So let's pray as we prepare our hearts to give. Jesus, we thank you this morning for the privilege to be able to give into your kingdom. Lord, we thank you that uh, we can give these gifts with glad and generous hearts, knowing that they'll make a difference in the lives of people around us. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the generous hearts of the givers. Bless them in their generosity, for we know deeply within our spirits that we would never be able to outgive you. That as we give these gifts, you'll return unto us again many times over in ways that only you can do. And we're so grateful for that this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
I would invite you to join in our affirmation of faith, which is an affirmation from 1 Corinthians and from Colossians. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ, Christ died, died for our sins, was buried, was, was raised on the third day, and, and appeared, appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. Our scripture lessons begin with the prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Well, my apologies. The first reading was from Psalms, and I don't have that with me at the moment. Um, the new, first New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 17. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by mortals, life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed, he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. And the second New Testament reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, 
in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. <clears throat> and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. And now for the psalm lesson. Thank you for someone bringing the Bible to me. Um, this is Psalm 66, uh, verses 8 through 20. <clears throat> Praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Let us pray together. Lord, may, now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And we'd be quick to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. Amen. As I think about today's passage of Scripture, I'm thinking about the gift and wonder of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of God's greatest gifts to us. He reminds us of what God has done through Jesus Christ. Here, in this particular passage, in my translation, the name for the Holy Spirit is the Counselor, but we could also translate that the Comforter, or the Helper, or the one called alongside us simply to help us. The word in the Greek is paraclete, and it has all those and more meanings, really, when we think about it, that the Holy Spirit's purpose and witness in our lives is so vitally important that God reminds us through the gift and grace of the Holy Spirit what's really important and how we can live our lives and do the work of the kingdom with confidence and with joy and with assurance. How often in the midst of our lives do we need comfort? Very often, because sometimes this world is a rough place, isn't it? Sometimes we struggle with the reality of death and life, and sometimes we struggle with grief in the midst of our journey together as the people of God. The promise that we have from God, though, is that there is a comforter, one called to be our helper. That God himself, God in person, that the Holy Spirit is personal. 
I cringe whenever I hear someone refer to the Holy Spirit as it because that just doesn't really jive with what's happening in the life of the Scripture. As you think about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has been present since the beginning of creation. It was through the Holy Spirit, as we read and think about in Genesis, that he hovered over the land and over the sea, and he teemed with uh, life, and he brought life into existence. It's the Holy Spirit that came upon the prophets of old and reminded of them. It was the Holy Spirit that came upon Abraham as he was about the work of establishing the nation for God. It was the Holy Spirit who came in moments in the lives of those who were important to God to remind the people of how powerful and how capable God was through the prophets and the kings and others. But the Holy Spirit wasn't given to them in a permanent sense like it is given to us. I love this passage of Scripture because it reminds us of the truth of what Jesus is doing. In this passage, Jesus says for all time that you can always have the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit can be present with you, what? Forever. That the Holy Spirit is eternal. Even in the Gospel of John, there are so many references to the life and teaching and the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, what? A person who reminds us. Have you ever been in a situation where you were trying to think of a particular word to say to a particular individual, and all of a sudden it just occurred to you a scripture that comes to mind that's perfectly fitting for that time and for that moment? Well, that's the Holy Spirit working in you and through you. That's the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in our hearts. I love it. Uh, some Sunday school teacher was saying, well, you can invite Jesus into your heart and the little kid in the Sunday school class said, well, if I invite Jesus into my heart and he lives into my heart, Jesus is bigger than I. Won't he show everywhere? I love that because that's how it should be and that's exactly what we're thinking about when we invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts. The Holy Spirit should show everywhere in the world because what? The Holy Spirit gives us power to overcome power to overcome sin. Just think about the places, even in this a book of John, in the Gospel of John, where the Holy Spirit is mentioned. In this passage, in verse 16, the world cannot accept him, but we can. He lives in us and through us, in verse 17. He teaches us, in verse 26 of this chapter, and he reminds us of Jesus' words, and he convicts us of sin and shows us God's righteousness and announces God's judgment upon evil. He guides us into truth and gives insight into the future that we can share and trust in. And he brings glory, most importantly, to Jesus. I think that is the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit. He reminds us and helps us come into a relationship with Christ. It's the Holy Spirit who first beckons us and woos us. I love Wesleyan theology. I love the idea of grace. Because I think, really, when we think about it, that when John Wesley talks about grace, and he does that almost every moment, almost every word that comes out of him is endued with grace. It's about grace, isn't it? There's a prevenient grace, the grace that keeps us from going so far away from God that at a point in time we can't accept or embrace God's work through Jesus Christ. And then there's justifying grace, the grace that reminds us that as we confess our sins and ask God for forgiveness, that Jesus does that very thing. He forgives us and allows us a new life in Christ Jesus. And there's sanctifying grace. And really when we think about that, what's that? That's the continuing work of God in our lives that allow us to become the people that God already sees us as, to begin doing the things that God would ask us to do. And think about that as we think about grace and in the Wesleyan tradition and the United Methodist Church, we can be reminded, what does that really mean? Well, grace to Wesley was simply the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit is the one that, what, brings us to a point of realizing that we need God, that we we're born into this world with a purpose, that there's a hole in our heart that can only be filled with Christ, that we need God and that God is actively pursuing all of us from the time that we're born to the time that we can embrace and accept Christ for ourselves in the midst of the journey. I remember there were times in my early youth that I was not yet a Christian and yet I knew that God was real. One time I was out in a field in northern Michigan in the early spring and the snow was just beginning to go down. I remember it vividly to this day. I'll never forget that moment. The tufts of earth were just peeking through the snow and I remember I broke into singing a hymn the very best that I could, and 
we joke about that because I don't sing. That's not my gift. Others here do that for me, and I'm so grateful for their talent and for their ability. But I remember just singing the words, How Great Thou Art, because of the wonder of the creation that I was living in and walking through on that beautiful spring morning. I knew then God was real. But then there was a day when I accepted Christ into my heart. I shared that story before. I was not anxious to go to a particular revival meeting, but when I got there, the preacher started preaching about stuff that I loved. And I remember uh, he started talking about woodworking, and I just totally got engrossed in the sermon. And then I felt something strange in my heart. There was a compelling realization that I really, really, really needed to give my heart to God. And I remember being resistant to doing that because I just didn't really know what that totally meant and what that would mean for me and I meant that I'd have to give up things that I liked and I didn't want to be embarrassed and my brother was there and I'm thinking I don't want to do this my brother Irv will think less of me that's the lie that the devil was speaking to my heart in that moment but the Holy Spirit's presence was wooing me and that's what the Holy Spirit does the Holy Spirit just draws you compels you encourages you uh, loves you into a relationship with God. And I remember that just became overwhelmingly impossible to resist. That grace seemed impossible to resist to me. I got up and took that first slow step. And then I remember taking another and another and another. And by the time that I reached the altar, I know that I was running about as fast as I could. It was just an amazing experience. And I prayed a prayer, asking God to forgive me and asking God into my heart. The Holy Spirit's been with me ever since. Sometimes I quench the Spirit. Sometimes I don't always do what the Spirit asks me to do. And sometimes I neglect the Spirit in my life. But the Holy Spirit never has left me. And I'm so grateful for that reality that we can have and share that Spirit. The Spirit of Christ teaches us all things, reminds us of everything that's important. The Holy Spirit's primary responsibility is to teach us that Jesus was willing to come to earth to show us the way to the God. That Jesus was willing to come and die that we could have life and that we can put our faith in Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that makes that real. None of us would come to Christ apart from the gift and work and grace of God's Holy Spirit. And I sense the Holy Spirit. I was doing a devotional earlier this week and uh, uh, I was outside and it was an incredibly windy day. Some of you complained that you couldn't really hear me in that devotional, and that's all right. I'm going to reshare it with you now, really, in that sense. But I was outside, and I was at the front of the parsonage, and there was a beautiful Japanese maple that's growing there, so beautiful and so amazing, and you could see the spirit or the wind blowing through that maple. Now, could I see the wind? No, I couldn't see the wind. I couldn't see the wind at all. But I could see the evidence of the wind, couldn't I? Because the leaves of that tree were rustling and they were blowing quite hard. And if I looked across the street at the larger trees, I could see that they were really whipping. They were going back and forth and there was movement in them. And I knew that what? The wind was blowing through them. Now there's another word for Holy Spirit in the New Testament and also in the Old Testament. It's pneuma. It's what? Breath or wind. And sometimes the Holy Spirit acts like that. The Holy Spirit is blowing in a fresh and a new way and i want us to lay hold of that sometimes there may be some fear or anxiety in in what's going to happen next well we don't know the future but we can trust our future to god and we can know that if we'll get caught off in the life of the spirit if we allow the wind of the spirit to let us set sail we'll be blessed by god and he'll bring us god will bring us to the place where we need to be The other day I was outside in front of the parsonage. I've been spending a lot of time outdoors, and I I love that. It renews my spirit. And I I noticed that in the big uh, maple tree across the street in my neighbor's yard, there's a nesting pair of Mississippi kites. Do you know what a Mississippi kite is? It's a raptor-type bird. It's a beautiful bird. It's pretty big, and it's gray. And if you ever look really high in the sky, you'll see them way, way, way up there just being carried by the current. They never have to flap their wings. When they get up to a certain point, they can just set their wings at the right angle and adjust that angle, and that'll just hold them like right there in place. Or if they want to go forward, they adjust the wing just a little bit, and what? The wind carries them to where they need to be. Well, I think the Holy Spirit is like that wind. The Holy Spirit will take us to where we need to be. We don't need to fear. 
where God will lead us. We need to lay hold of that and simply rest in the work and movement of the Holy Spirit in your life in the course of these days and weeks ahead. The Holy Spirit wants to what? Teach us, help us, encourage us. The Holy Spirit is a lot like courage lying there, you know. In the midst of the journey, the Holy Spirit is the one that comforts us when we get frightful. So if you have some anxiety today as a result of all that's happening with the virus situation or with the restarting of the economy or any of those things, trust that the Holy Spirit is still alive and well. And it's the Holy Spirit of God that reminds us of all of the things that are important. It's the Holy Spirit that brings us uh, to the realization that we need to embrace God and accept God in our own hearts and in our own ways. And it's the Holy Spirit who dwells where? In us. I think we have a, an advantage over all of the prophets of the Old Testament because in the Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit did what? Came upon an individual for a specific purpose or a specific task. The Holy Spirit came upon uh, Moses, for instance, when he was in the wilderness where he could take the rod and stick it in the ground and water would wash forth and form uh, water for the people. The Holy Spirit was present in the prophets of Elijah and Elisha for moments of time, but the Holy Spirit didn't dwell in them as Jesus promises that the Spirit can dwell in us. Isn't that an amazing realization today that you have the power of God living in you? And I'm thinking that we should be like the little child that said, well, if God is living in me, shouldn't he show truth? Yes, I believe that with all my heart. I believe that as we allow the Holy Spirit to move in us and through us, God will show to the world in our behavior, in our attitudes, in our heart. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Sometimes we miss that mark, but sometimes in the midst of the journey, when we get that right, there's something wonderfully beautiful about that. Be sensitive to the moving of the Spirit in these days. Don't be afraid. I think fear is the one thing that would keep us from truly investing ourselves wholly in God. Do we truly trust God? And that's what it comes down to, really, in a relationship with God. We've got to know that God is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We've got to trust and know that the word is true, that it reminds us of the truth of the nature and character of God. And that as we put our hearts uh, to serving God, that as we look to God and ask God to be with us, and as we call out to God, as Cody sang earlier this morning in the service, as we call or cry to God, God will certainly be there to answer those prayers, to answer that cry, and to be a total presence with us. That's the wonder and grace of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that God is with us always. That's the good news of the gospel, man. That's the good news that we share together. And I'm so excited to be able to share that with you. If you would like more of God's spirit in your life, all you have to do is ask. God wants to fill you to overflowing with his grace and with his love and with his power. With his power to overcome sin and temptations in your life. With his power to be in ministry of healing into the world around us with his power to accomplish all things, because nothing is impossible with God. That's another word that is used for the Spirit also, dunamis, power. That, that's the Holy Spirit that gives us power to overcome in our lives. The Holy Spirit wants to be with us, to empower us, to overcome those things that would so easily entangle us and hinder us. He wants us to have the power to overcome sin in our lives so that we can truly reflect the character and the love of God to the world. And I'm hoping and praying that as we spend time apart and together in this sense, I think that we're together, very much together as the body of Christ and as this local congregation as we share in these live streams. And I thank God for that technology that we can do this. Uh, and I thank God for each person that participates uh, in helping make that happen uh, during the course of this time where we're separated by space. But there is no separation of space when you rely upon the grace and the work and the wonder of the Holy Spirit because the same Holy Spirit that is present in my heart here right now is also present in your heart where you are and we can get caught up together in what God wants to do. That's my hope and that's my prayer for us as a congregation and for the church in general as we move forward in this time. 
of doing things in different ways and in new ways, change is inevitable. How we respond and react to that is up to us. And with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we can have confidence. We need not fear. I love one of my favorite passages of Scripture is uh, 1 John, and it talks about perfect love, what? Casting out all fear. And the perfect love of the Holy Spirit dwelling in you can give you confidence and assurance that you can know that it's going to be all right because you're in relationship with the creator and sustainer of it all. Wow. Think about that this morning. Trust in that. Trust in the work of the Spirit in your life today. And you will be blessed. You will have confidence. You can have peace. And the wonder about it is, is that it will be what? Always. It says that he will not leave you. That the Spirit will never leave you. As you realize that this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed, amazing Spirit that we've talked about this morning. Holy Spirit, be with us as we go forth from where we are into a world. Let us do that with confidence, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would go before us, for we realize that you already live in us, that you would surround us on every side, that you'd go before us, that you would be behind us, that you would be to our left, and that you would be to our right, and that as we go out in our daily living, as we go out in life, that you would watch over us, and we know that you will, and Lord, we're so grateful for the privilege of realizing that you'll always be with us that we have an eternal relationship with Christ uh, because you have brought us 
to faith. Holy Spirit, we thank you for all that you do and all that you want to do in us this day. Be with us, we pray, and we know that you are in Christ's name.